myself into a human I can depend on to bring me happy. Welcome to A Captain's Log, the Star Trek talk show centered around the animated series, Star Trek Prodigy, Lower Decks, plus all the incredible Star Trek series, past to present. We'll take you to the galactic barrier during our time each week, because the Star Trek universe is growing, and it's getting animated. <coughs> and of course. My right-hand man during this crazy course adventure is Raj, my chief, cook, and bottle washer. Bottle washer? Look, Bass, I don't understand the historical reference in relationship to our space-time continuum as to bottle or wash? How many times do I have to tell you, Raj? I'm an ambassador, not a freshwater fish called a bass. Sorry. I'm just excited about returning to my home planet, XO3, where I was created. Well, yeah, we're both excited. Okay. I never know with humans because you have a finite timeline, and I'm based on a human extended autonomic nervous system clock with synaptic fusion. <laughs> yes, those synthetic organs from your human host body transferred to your android body is where the mental patterns went wrong, my friend. Enemies of the Federation is our rear view in review topic. Yes. Talking about enemies of the Federation and even how we will tie it into talking about Nickelodeon's new Star Trek prodigy is a priority. You're right, Raj. In the coming weeks, we will be interviewing Star Trek directors, producers, writers, and well, the talented Trek people that you care about hearing from. Now, I'm your personal Federation Ambassador to the fans, Brian Kreutz. Like these former Federation Ambassadors, I'll be traveling to help you, the fan, further understand the planets that Star Trek brought us into orbit each week. We'll orbit the planets in real time. As Star Trek experts, Raj and I will be trekspertising while visiting each planet from orbit. Our newsworthy reporting to you will be from my ambassador-sized quarters on this Federation starship. Coming to you from Earth's entertainment capital of creatives in Southern California, a captain's log is just around the corner, and a small mountain or two between us and Hollywood. Official Star Trek has been filmed regularly in just two places, Southern California in and around Hollywood, or of course in Toronto, up in Canada. I'm joined each week by an android that's slightly better than the tin can robots Nomad and M4. Our android is full of intertwined 1960s buzzing sounded circuits of the original Star Trek series era. And possibly a positronic brain. Well, maybe just a robot brain. But yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Is Raj another Dr. Noonien Soong prototype brother like before or Mr. Data? Or is he like the evil lure? Actually, he's none of those. Raj is a downgrade from the tin can robot Nomad. I mean, do we really need another robot that blurts out, I am Nomad. I am perfect. That which is imperfect must be sterilized. All serious Trek robots aside, this isn't a Nomad robot. It's Roger. I call him Raj for short. More on who he is in just a moment. Okay. You've probably seen him on a national fat loss commercial that aired on television for two years. Or a cameo on a TV show coming to you from a television studio on Earth. He's your host, Federation Ambassador to the fans, Brian Kreutz. Raj, thanks. You're my biggest fan here on Earth, but stop. Let's tell them about this show. This is a Star Trek talk show called The Captain's Log, which is often imitated but never duplicated, and is a series which will encounter strange new worlds in a diabolical dilemma of discussions that are, dare I say, opinionated. Today's topic is enemies of the Federation, like how Nomad turned into an enemy. Bots 
androids, and synthetic life forms are created in man's image and are therefore flawed. I'm not your enemy, although sometimes the Federation or even this ship's crew treat me like one. Enough, Raj. If Captain Kirk were here, he would beam your half-breed hunk of homemade circuitry into the depths of space, ignoring Federation rules and regulations. And of course, Kirk would eloquently get away with it each week as a hero. I am pinpointing Kirk's gallantry in the episode called The Changeling. Here on A Captain's Log, we want you to be the most informed person about the Star Trek Prodigy premiere. Kate Mulgrew is returning to play Catherine Janeway in at least two seasons of the new Star Trek Prodigy. Now, the premise and story is rebel teens steal a starship. Could they end up being inducted into the enemies of the Federation Club? Of Rufians, perhaps? Or were they meant to be inducted into Starfleet as officers? Now, this is a compilation I've created for you to remember some of the really bad guys that the Federation has had to come to deal with over the eons. You mean like Kronos? We'll talk about those implanted memories a little bit later, Raj. I know! Who are your favorite enemies of the Federation? Why? What are the reasons they're your favorite enemies? And what Star Trek series? Hold that adversarial thought. Back to the premise of Nickelodeon's Star Trek Prodigy series. Now, here's our latest intelligent report. A group of lawless teens who discover a derelict Starfleet ship and use it to search for adventure, meaning, and salvation. This is the premise from what we understand right now. We don't really have a lot of details. Now, it has fascinating concepts built in. So in previous Star Trek series, there have been other lawless renegade groups featured in episodes. Take the Maquis, for example. Now, the Maquis took former Federation recurring characters from the next generation, like Ro Laren. Remember Ro Laren, played by Michelle Forbes? Don't forget about Thomas Riker. Then, let's not forget about Deep Space Nine's Lieutenant Commander Eddington. All former Starfleet defecting to the Maquis. So that's just a brief message of lawless or renegade characters that we know. How about teen characters that the Star Trek Prodigy series will center around? What will they be like? Remember in the Deep Space Nine episode titled Valiant? Jake and Nog are rescued by a Federation Defiant class ship that was crewed by overeager Red Squad cadets. Now the majority of them were adolescents. So they were rescued by teens, but not quite lawless renegades. So the beginning of my favorite feature film, probably a lot of yours as well, 1982's Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, when Admiral Kirk arrives on Captain Spock's Enterprise, which is being used to train Starfleet Academy cadets, many of whom are teens. Now all this rigorous training it takes to become a Starfleet officer, it sounds fascinating. If the premise is any indication, of Nickelodeon's new Star Trek Prodigy series, well, the focus seemed to be on a group of teens who are clearly not meant to be members of Starfleet if they're being labeled as renegades. Prodigy is setting up some rarely seen perspectives on the Star Trek universe by combining teens and lawless renegades together. None of them in the poster, that first look poster that we saw, were wearing any Starfleet uniforms. In fact, to date, the only information we have that there is any type of Starfleet connection is the hologram of Captain Catherine Janeway that these lawless teens are apparently going to be interacting with. I am not a lawless renegade who flies derelict starships. I am a derelict in a teenage body. Good point there, Raj, you old data drive derelict. Now, what's your take on the Star Trek Prodigy premiere, Raj? So, in Star Trek Prodigy, the forthcoming idea of a group of lawless teens finding a derelict ship opens up a few storylines that are able to fit into the universe of Star Trek as we know it. Here's how. If Prodigy is going to be set within the well-trodden time period of the 22nd through 24th centuries, we could see something with teenage cadets 
along the lines of Nicholas Locarno, who looked just like Tom Paris and his roommate in Rebellion, Wesley Crusher. These two participated in the band shuttle maneuvers during their Starfleet Academy's Nova Squadron days, shown on The Next Generation, so that could be a possibility for these adversarial-type Starfleet teens in the newest series. Good point, Raj. You know your Star Trek. Humans frequently make emotional connections through TV shows with an adversarial type of musical score when the bad guys show up on screen or when the enemies of the Federation ship is shown. Yes, Raj, our fans may have heard of musical composer Naomi Malumed when she was first offered her musical talents in 2019's Star Trek Short Trek episode called Q&A. Nami Malumed, who's an Israeli-Dutch composer from Earth, will score the animated Star Trek Prodigy series. Now this makes the Los Angeles-based musician the first woman to lead the musical direction of a Star Trek series. Now the word is that Naomi touches on original Star Trek series composer Alexander Courage's Star Trek opening theme. This sound is great. A Captain's Log returns in a moment. Welcome back to A Captain's Log. I'm Brian Kreutz, joined by Raj the Bot, who's always perfect. Now let's open our view screen down in the cargo bay to see Raj, and he will rejoin us. Get our communicator here. Ambassador Kreutz to Raj. Hi, Raj. Now I just read an article by a human named Dana Hansen. So from 2021 in our historical reference, writer Dana Hansen, here's what she says. Starfleet ships have historically been too well maintained and guarded to readily be available for anyone to find their own means when referring to teens taking a Starfleet derelict ship. And there you have it, straight from the pad. Another explanation for the Prodigy series is Teen's discovery of a derelict ship. It is possible that the ship was abandoned or lost to a crash or a battle of some kind. Follow me on this story, Raj. In Star Trek Prodigy, I agree with this writer, Dana Hansen, that it's unlikely for teens to steal a ship and fly it. But good Star Trek story writers will find a solid story to make it happen, as they almost always do. This article by the human named Dana Hansen goes on to say, A possibility, however, is that the reason Star Trek Prodigy's main characters have access to a Federation ship is because the Federation is no longer around to claim it. This, of course, could only happen after the collapse of the Federation in the future, so the possibility that Star Trek Prodigy is actually set during the time period of what we just saw in Star Trek Discovery Season 3 during the burn, then this becomes highly likely when this idea of teens taking a ship could occur. Okay, I see, Raj. So what you and this human writer with equitable theories are saying is that the Star Trek Prodigy TV series could take place during the so-called burn era of Starfleet in the late 31st century, right? That is a distinct possibility, yes! Okay, well why would Catherine Janeway still be around and care for these teens as unclear enemies of the Federation? I have a teenage daughter. The meaning of life with her starts as being rebellious as a teen breaking away to do her own thing. But adversary? It's a little bit of a harsh word. My favorite Star Trek enemies of the Federation are the Romulans, ranging from the original series episode Balance of Terror all the way to the Romulans in the Senate in the feature film Star Trek Nemesis. With all those great additional original series, Next Generation and Deep Space Nine episodes, don't forget about Voyager, the ruthless Romulans are my favorite. We'll see if they show up in Prodigy. Reminding the audience, who is watching via cyberspace streaming services, listening on radio waves, and on broadcast television signals emanating from the Santa Ana Mountains. Yes, Raj, all the primitive technology ways of today that people tune into our show. Get on with what you were going to say. We're discussing enemies of the Federation. 
which includes the newest Star Trek series, the first CG, computer generated, Star Trek show for the whole franchise with Star Trek Prodigy. The new series will be a 3D animated series aimed at a younger audience. According to its Emmy award-winning producer, Aaron Wolke, who says, quote, it aims for wonder, optimism, and adventure. Yes, producer Heather Caden said due to the time-consuming process of 3D animation, we're likely looking at a 2022 premiere for Star Trek Prodigy. Wow! I can't wait for that date! Writer, producer, and head of all things Star Trek, Alex Kurtzman also confirmed that the series had been picked up for a two-season order. Great. Lots of truck to watch on Nickelodeon with the youngins. We're guaranteed at least 20 to 24 episodes. Good. You're old enough to kick back with a synthahol without having to ask for permission. I require no sustenance or a brewski to make me float. I feel like I'm floating above the sky. Uh, yeah, you are floating above the sky. Look out there, Tin Man. So, Raj, the Prodigy producer Heather Caden also emphasized that the series creators are brothers Kevin and Dan Hageman. Now, the Hageman's writing style will be accessible to kids without patronizing them or alienating their parents. It's a little important. The Hageman's write with a very epic quality. Caden also agrees with bringing on board the series writers and creators in the Hageman's. She said, quote, fans can introduce the franchise to their kids and for new fans to be formed because Star Trek is such a big franchise. Ambassador. Bass, for short, since we're timed on a television show. I have a quick question. How, Lawless? And what does Lawless mean? Are they rebellious teens? Needing Catherine Janeway to set them on course? Let's speculate on the Prodigy series with Spock-style logic using the facts that we have at hand. Remember Mulgrew portrayed Captain Catherine Janeway on the Star Trek Voyager series, then Admiral Janeway in the film Nemesis. She was talking to Captain Picard in his ready room on the view screen, remember? Knowing she's a big part of reprising her character in Star Trek Prodigy, who's the lead character with this young crew of rebellious teens who are likely not Starfleet? They're definitely not Starfleet Academy goers. Will we see a more lighter side with comedy sprinkled into the Star Trek Prodigy series like Lower Decks? Or does the darker, grimmer stories emerge with Enemies of the Federation? Lots to discuss here with you on A Captain's Log. A Captain's Log returns in a moment. Boo -boo. Raj to Ambassador Kreutz. Go ahead, Raj. I've been monitoring you via audio only. May I turn the view screen on? Yes, Raj. You've asked me to impose my ambassador's orders onto the captain of the ship. Why? Because you want the captain and this crew to take you to your planet, XO3. We'll have that planet on next week's episode for Planet of the Week, I promise. Star Trek takes viewers on a trek through the stars each week, and we will be diving deeper into orbit of those planets. Trek Trivia Time! Star Trek fans, this is your time to take the clues Raj has given you to trivia, so you will know who his father is and what episode it belongs to. Here's a clue. Raj's name is a shortened nickname for his father's name used in this episode. Can you name his father's character from the original Star Trek series episode? The three choices are on your screen. Number one, is it Roger C. Carmel, the alias name for Harry Mudd? Number two, Dr. Roger Corby. Remember, Dr. Roger Corby was required reading material at the Academy, according to Kirk. Or is it three, Roger Limley? I'll have the answer for you in just a moment. So we've been discussing the Star Trek Prodigy series, and I asked you what your favorite enemies of the Federation are, Raj. Yes, 1987, when Klingon Worf was on the bridge of the Enterprise of Star Trek The Next Generation proving our biggest enemies are now allies. That was 
something some fans had yet to fully embrace. That's a good point, Raj. Now, the Klingons were the biggest adversary in the original series, the Enterprise prequel series, and even in the first two seasons of Star Trek Discovery. In retrospect to enemies of the Federation, do you recall Star Trek fans being outraged that the Klingons, Star Trek's biggest enemies of the Federation, became allies at the start of a new series? Not only allies, but working on the bridge of the Enterprise. Let's get an answer to our trivia item. The answer is Dr. Roger Corby. If you can guess the characters and episode, give yourself a dessert from the food replicator. I've got a food replicator in my quarters here, right? Now, if you miss it, well, you may deserve a Vulcan neck bench to knock you out for a nap. We will be orbiting a planet like our beautiful planet Earth each week that a Starfleet starship like this one visited in a Star Trek episode that you've seen on television. Captain's Log, Stardate, 568-44.9, Earth Year, 2379. I'm debriefing at Earth's Starfleet HQs when their commissioner catches XO-3's distress call from a cult called Novelty. Then, silence. So on Starfleet's go, I pointed the Oris toward XO-3. Once home to the Old Ones and to Dr. Roger Corby, I'd get to visit its icy surface. I'd been told that Kirk's landing party was rescued by Spock, who found me deactivated on XO-3 nearly a century ago. Raj. I'm one of only a handful of androids to complete the Starfleet Academy preparatory program. Raj the Robot. And an android daydream again. Yeah, I'll come back. Now I'm assistant to the ambassador of the Federation. Raj. Oh, sorry, ambassador. How might I be of service? Proceed with the captain's log playback, Raj. Captain's log. Stardate 56845.2. Perchance several days out from the planet XO3, Starfleet hits our calm with chatter of trouble. Decades earlier, with the death of the Old Ones and Roger Corby, XO3 had settled into a kind of peace. But a cult known as the Novel T had settled there, claiming a utopian existence. Instead, they're keepers of a dark secret. I don't know, you tell me, it's the captain's alarmist side talking. Ambassador, a moment. Yes, Captain. We need to move into preparation for the XO3 mission, starting with a planet review. We need to debrief. In the meanwhile, Ambassador... <sighs> Do androidy things. Holodeck program Earth 1920s. Computer, is the program ready? Rog and Young Vulcan at New York City Dodgy Bar. Program complete. Enter when ready. Barkeep, pale ale. Pale ale for the pale man. Pale android, if you please. Man, android, doesn't matter. Does to me. Say something. What is it you wish to talk of, Raj? Why can't you be like the real Spock? What lies within you was not your own emotion or memories, but is now thrust upon you and is a part of you. We will deal with this in good time. Computer, more emotional. Emotional states come in a variety of parameters. Please specify. <sighs> Computer. Okay, okay. Emotion, but not sadness. Hello, happy, my old friend. I'm glad you've manifested yourself into a human I can depend on to bring me happy. 